your view on this video just added money to the prize that will be awarded to the first person to beat a game I've made. Let me explain. As a game dev, I've played tons of difficult games over the years. But even when I've managed to get through them without smashing my setup, the end often feels more like reading a teenager's social posts after a breakup than anything worthwhile. I dedicate this game to you, the one who came this far. Kind of weird, right? So I thought, what if I made a game where the end was actually worth getting to? And well, what's worth more than a pile of Benjamins? The only problem is that I'm one person, and at any given time, I'm working on at least three projects at once. So to get the game done in a realistic time frame, I enlisted the help of my friends, Cutflow Studios. Together, we've made the hardest game ever. Seriously, that's what the game is called. It's a 2D platformer where you play as a clay pot who's ventured deep into a cave to find a unique flower. But now that you've found one, you've got to get back to the surface by parkouring and solving puzzles. You might be thinking it'd be pretty easy to make a difficult game. You just add a bunch of impossible stuff. To which I'd say, You think it's so easy, Jared? Why don't you go? But seriously, we wanted to make the game hard without making it feel unfair. So we've personally verified that each section can be beaten, and that should be a good sign because none of us are particularly great at platformers. The difficulty comes from the player's ability to string together the perfect run, because dying makes you start over. But that doesn't mean there are no chances at redemption. We added collectible phoenix feathers that allow you to place custom respawn points and double as extra lives. Though at this point, they are pretty rare. You can thank Max Makes Games for that because as a beta tester, he kept repeatedly saying the game was easy. Thanks, Max. We had to change the original idea a bit due to time, but we still ended up with a fun game. We originally planned to have different abilities the player could acquire, like double jump or being able to helicopter. Aside from the time it would take to create and bug fix each ability, we also had to make the art and design the levels so that they worked with abilities the player may or may not have at any given spot. I think the natural thought is that more abilities would give the game more variety and make it more fun, but I think it could actually be kind of frustrating. Because each time we give the player a new ability, we have to explain what it does and teach them how to use it. If we don't do that well enough and the player dies on the next obstacle, that's not a great feeling. The way it is in the final game, the player has all the abilities from the start. This means they can master them as they play. I've seen this happen in real time during beta testing and it's actually pretty cool to see. Even with fewer abilities though, just having wall jumping and coyote time still provides interesting gameplay when paired with level design. We added some falling blocks, different types of mushrooms to bounce on, stationary and falling stalactites, ladders, moving platforms, secret doors, and levers, just to name a few. The approach I took to level design was just yeeting stuff into the game and refining it through playtesting. Right now, there are four levels stacked on top of each other. Level zero is what I consider the tutorial level. Shroomy and cave drawings guide the player how to play the game. Level one is the normal rock level, level two is the crystal level, and level three is the dirt level. I did the level designs for levels zero, one, and three, so feel free to let me know if my yeetus and fix this approach worked. Cutflow Studio did the level design for level two, the crystal level. There's some crazy stuff in there I know they're excited for you to get to. So make sure to comment and let them know if you're able to make it there. One thing I noticed when making levels was that over time, something would happen while playtesting that would give me an idea for the level design. For example, falling blocks are activated when a player touches them. The obvious use for that is to pressure the player to move quickly. But I then realized they could be used as platforms over lava. And then I thought, what if you made the lava different depths and had to figure out how many blocks to activate to form a bridge, which led to this puzzle. Then at one point, I accidentally got under a block while it was falling. Jumping allowed me to lift the block back up. 
And I thought, wouldn't it be crazy if at some point you had to juggle the blocks in order to progress? So, good luck with that. That's the kind of design that I really enjoy though. You start working and then the game kind of reveals itself to you as you play. You just make tiny decisions over time as you gather information. But I realized that not everyone who tests the game will give feedback, so having raw data is important too. In a game like this, it's very possible that some sections would be either too easy or too difficult. So to track that, we're using some tools and services from the sponsor of this video, Unity. Specifically, we're keeping track of the player death locations using Unity Analytics and visualize the data in a heat map coded in Unity Muse chat, which I've been trying in closed beta. From the heat map, we can quickly see if any part is too hard or easy and make changes accordingly. We're also using Unity Remote Config to check that players are using the correct version of the game and to send a global message in the event that someone completes the challenge. It honestly blows my mind that any of this is even possible for an indie dev. Huge thank you to Unity for making it possible and for sponsoring this challenge. If you want to compete in the challenge, there are a few rules we need to go over. First and foremost, valid runs must be recorded. You can use a streaming bod or just record it using something like OBS. The frame rate for your video needs to be a minimum of 24 frames per second. But really, your video just shouldn't look like a PowerPoint presentation. Videos can be submitted on Discord using this link. There's a hardest game ever category with a channel for recordings. There's also channels to post any bugs or suggestions. Runs must be completed on the most current version of the game. A message displays at the top when you're on an old version, so that should be pretty clear. Valid runs must not utilize any glitches, bugs, or other exploits. There's a DLC that gives players access to different pots and trail colors, as well as a practice mode with infinite feathers and keys. It also gives the player the ability to go to any specific locations. It should go without saying, but just in case it needs to be said, runs completed using practice mode are not valid for the challenge. Each update can only have one winner. In the event that someone wins, the challenge will reset. The winner will be paid via PayPal. So no, I'm not sending you V-Bucks or Target gift cards. And if there's something legal I'm supposed to say, that applies too? As a game dev team, we may update the game to fix bugs or make different sections easier or harder. But we'll limit the updates to Mondays so that you'll know you have at least 7 days to beat any particular version of the game. It certainly makes sense to share this video since it increases the prize, but please don't send bots or spam refresh the page. I want to keep this challenge going, so the plan is if someone beats the game, we'll update it to make it harder and then reset the challenge. But if YouTube disables ads on this video because of fake views, we won't be able to do that. So the best thing you can do to promote this challenge and increase the prize is to share this video and rewatch it when you need to reference some of the tips and tricks I've hidden throughout the video. If you haven't played the game yet, you might not realize how helpful this video is until you actually get into the game. With that being said, if you haven't done it already, the game is available for free on Steam, so you can go and get it and see if you can beat it. Huge shout out to Cupflow Studios for collaborating on this project. They're a group of teenagers from Italy doing really awesome and inspiring things in game dev. They had so many cool ideas I wish we could have gotten to. I can only imagine what kind of ideas they have for their own projects. So make sure to join their Discord to track their progress. There's a link in the description. A special thanks to all of our Patreon and YouTube members. Because I worked on this game, I missed last month's video, but your support makes working on cool and interesting projects like this hurt a little less. As I mentioned earlier, there is a DLC you can get for this game, which unlocks practice mode, custom trail colors, and these really awesome cosmetics. Like seriously, how cute are these guys? Any money we make from the DLC will be split 50-50 with Cupflow Studios, so that's a way you can spend a few bucks and show us both some love.